Hi everyone, just gonna do this last question. This is a question that really has less to do with elasticity, a little bit more to do with consumer surplus, producer surplus, and dead weight loss, and a little bit of the excise uh, tax. So in this uh, problem, this is the very last one, we're looking at doing a um, soda. Soda is being bought and sold. Each consumer is buying at most one can of soda, and the producers are selling at least one can of soda, at most one can of soda, and the government is looking for advice about a 40 cent um, uh, excise tax. So we know that we have a demand and a supply schedule, so that's one thing to note. Uh, we have consumers, so that's going to tell us our uh, demand schedule. We also have our producers, that's going to tell us our supply schedule. So something that's useful to do with a problem like this is to kind of graph your supply and demand, and if we imagine that we have you know the quantity of sodas okay so we're looking at the quantity of sodas maybe up to six and we're also looking at what people are willing to pay uh, for a can of soda 20 30 40 you know 50 60 somebody's willing to pay 70 cents right so we might have uh, one at 70 uh, 60 50 <laughs> 40 30 uh, 20 nope just 30, okay? And um, uh, we might also then have the supply curve. Um, somebody is willing to sell the soda for 10, somebody's willing to sell the soda for 20, somebody's willing to sell the soda for 30, 40, and then 50, okay? So if I kind of graph this, uh, you get a sense of what our supply and our demand schedule might be, and this makes it a little bit easier. I can use the data set to say, well, what will be my equilibrium price? Well, I know the equilibrium price where um, quantity uh, demanded equals quantity supplied would be here, okay, at 40 cents, but I can also see that here on my graph. And because they're asking me when we hit that equilibrium price of 40 cents, uh, what will be the quantities of soda bought and sold? I know that um, the uh, answer to this first question will be 40 cents. That will be the price. That's the equilibrium price where the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. And I also know that four sodas uh, will be bought and sold, you know, in this market. Okay. If I was interested in um, the excise tax, now is going to raise the price to 60 cents. Okay. So I can kind of know this right here this 60 cents and if I make this a new supply curve right here kind of get a sense of um, what the new consumer price is at 60 cents this is now the supply curve plus the tax you know we've been looking at this a lot um, by graphing it um, now we're looking at it you know numerically right um, so the consumers are paying 60 cents and the producers if we kind of go down to what the producer price is here it is at 20 cents and if I want to look kind of in red I have the um, area of that rectangle that really gives me the tax revenue that's going to be going uh, to the government. Okay, so very typical situation of a supply curve. I'm just using some of the um, schedule and the numbers, you know, in this problem. Uh, so the question becomes, uh, with the excise tax, what is the new quantity that's going to be the quantity transacted? Um, something I'll notice is because the supply curve has shifted and now I am at the price of 60 cents, the new um, quantity is not going to be four. The new quantity is not going to be allocatively efficient. We'll get dead weight loss as a result of this, uh, but the new quantity will be two. Okay, so the quantity of soda transacted with the tax um, being placed uh, at the new consumer price of 60 cents, the new quantity will be two, okay? Without the tax, how much individual surplus does each of the consumers gain, okay? Well, for this, I can go back to my um, schedule, okay? And I know Homer, for example, because he pays 40 cents, but he's willing to pay 70, he has 30 cents of surplus. Bart, he also gets the good. He's willing to pay 60. He actually got the good for 40, so he has 20 cents. Lisa has 10 cents of surplus, and Marge, who gets the good, is willing to pay 40 and ultimately uh, pays 40. Um, this total here is all of my consumer surplus, okay? So the individual surplus uh, that consumers gained was actually 60 cents, okay? With the tax, the tax now is going to create a different scenario. With the tax, only two consumers are going to be able to get the good, okay? And the tax means that it's going to cost 60 cents. So Lisa, who used to get it, now she's no longer going to get it. Marge, who used to get it now she can't afford it anymore we only have these two consumers and because the new price is 60 uh, cents Bart won't have any surplus at all after the tax 
only Homer who is willing to pay 70 cents gets 10 cents um, from the, uh, so Homer will have 10 cents, you know, of consumer surplus after uh, the tax, okay? How much consumer surplus is lost as a result of the tax, okay? Well, we end up with, um, you know, 60 cents was what consumer uh, surplus was, okay? Um, after the tax, there's really only um, 10 uh, cents, so 50 cents was lost, okay? 50 cents was lost consumer and producer, uh, just consumer surplus, okay? If we look at the same thing with the producers, now we're just gonna be looking here at the producers. Without the exercise tax, how much individual producer surplus does each of the producers gain, okay? Well, when the quantity was four and we had four producers, we actually had uh, quite a few. Uh, so Alice was uh, willing to um, make the good for 10 cents. She actually got 40. So. Uh, uh, she was really looking at 30 cents of producer surplus. Rosalie, same thing, was willing to make the good at 20, was getting 40, so she had 20 cents of surplus. And Emmett also had 10 cents of surplus. Edward, who was willing to make the good for 40 cents, actually got 40 cents for the good, um, but no uh, producer surplus, okay? So this is gonna be a very similar scenario where 60 cents is the total uh, surplus, okay? If we add up everybody's surplus together, um, if we were to imagine what happens when there's only two made, okay, there's now only two producers who are willing to make the good when it's offered uh, for the effective price of 20 cents. Um, and that would be Alice who gets 10 cents of surplus. So Alice has 10 cents of surplus. And um, it is uh, uh, Rosalie who doesn't get any surplus, but gets the good, okay? So like consumer surplus, what is really lost is 50 cents. It was 60 cents without the tax. With the tax, we only have 10 cents of surplus, only for Alice. And as a result, 50 cents is lost uh, producer surplus, okay? I know that's messy on the side, but if you can kind of follow along with some of the descriptions, you'll be in good shape, okay? The last two are much more straightforward. How much government revenue does the ex size tax create? Well, the government revenue is going to be the per unit tax times the unit get that get transacted. So we have two diet sodas with the tax, okay? We know two is the quantity. Two times the actual uh, per unit tax, and it's a 40 cent tax. So the entire revenue that the government gets is 80 cents, okay? And the last question is, what is the dead weight loss, okay? The dead weight loss, you can do this in a couple of ways, okay? We know that initially the consumer and producer surplus was 60 cents each, okay? The consumer surplus was 60 cents. The producer surplus was uh, 60 cents. And so in total, there was a hundred, a uh, dollar twenty, right? In, in consumer and producer surplus. What? Okay, so basically, um, the one twenty is uh, the dollar twenty is really all about the consumer and producer surplus that you uh, that was you know when the graph was like this and you had maximum uh, consumer surplus and producer surplus. Uh, after the tax, um, we have lost some consumer and producer surplus in order to figure out how much. I know I can actually figure out what the total welfare is, um, and we know this from some of the other parts of the problem. Uh, one part of the total uh, welfare will be the government uh, revenue. Um, that government revenue uh, was a total of 80 cents, okay? So the government revenue is going to be included. Also in total uh, welfare is also going to be what's left of consumer surplus. So after the tax, we know that 50 cents of the welfare was lost. 10 cents is the only welfare that's left, okay? So we're given uh, 10 cents. And the same thing for the producer surplus. There was only 10 cents of producer surplus that was actually maintained. Uh, so all in all, we end up uh, with this this um, amount of um, uh, total uh, total welfare. So we have a dollar of total welfare. Compared to before, where we had actually a dollar twenty, this tells us that we do have dead weight loss, and the dead weight loss would have to be twenty cents. Okay, it's the um, hole in a sense that we get that's inefficiency. Um, because we are not allocatively efficient, we don't have um, the full consumer and producer surplus because of the tax. We have lower consumer surplus, lower producer surplus. In addition to that, even though we do get some government revenue, it doesn't make up for the full dollar twenty, right? Instead, uh, we have a dollar, um, and at the end, we have a deadweight loss of twenty cents. Okay, I hope that's helpful. We'll see you in class.